That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Welcome to Third Eye Visions, where we motivate the blind, stimulate your mind, and welcome all kind. Creating technology to help this blind man ride his motorcycle. Again, this is a very incredible story. It was sent to me by a man uh, from South Africa. His name is Jake Kruger. He was in a very terrible uh, motorcycle accident in which he lost his wife. Um, but he persevered, man. He wanted to ride motorcycles again, and uh, thanks to technology, he was able to do so so check out this story man it was sent in to me a couple of days ago it's very incredible i mean <laughs> defeats the odds i definitely wouldn't do it as a blind person but uh anyway check out the story and let me know what you think man on third eye visions my name is jacob kruger and in november 2005 i was heading back from pretoria towards kempton park on my bmw r11 and gs motorbike Coming past the one stop on the R21, when a car driver decided to U-turn across the highway right in front of me. From an early age, Jacob Kruger was fascinated by two things, computers and bikes. But in 2005, he was involved in an accident that damaged the nerve between his eyes and brain. We basically just come along the R21, headed past the one stop, and there's a long curve after that. And as we came around, the, around that curve, a person in the car tried to do a U-turn across the highway, and we hit the back corner of the car. I went over the handlebars, my wife who was on the back went down and an helmet came off and she got hit by another two cars that were coming up behind us as well. So she died pretty much instantly, where yeah, I was apparently in a coma for four and a half weeks. But due to a result of the accident, I have short term memory loss as well. So I don't really have any memories from about a, after about a week or so before the accident. Using software and modern technology to help him along, he's now able to live a normal life on a similar level to a sighted person. And with the support of his motorcycle family, he has managed to get back into programming. Two years later, Jacob's passion for biking was ignited. He challenged himself to get back on the bike as a blind man. And in November 2006, I got back on my, one of my other own bikes, a Suzuki Bandit 1200, and went up and down the main straight a couple of times with a friend talking to me via cell phone. One of the main reasons for wanting to get back on bike is the feeling of freedom. But we, we have a joke name for people in cars, we call them cage drivers. When you're on a bike, you're a lot freer. After riding through some open fields with someone guiding him, he decided he wanted to ride around a racetrack. Red Star Raceway and Suzuki put together a charity event where he could do just that. It's for a charity, for SA Guide Dogs Association and Action, for the blind and disabled. Um, we have sponsored the track. So we basically paid Red Star for the track for the day to be able to host the event. I'm actually very excited um, to see Jacob's smile is worth everything. That it, It's unbelievable to see the, the smile on his face when he gets off that motorbike. I'm very comfortable with the riding, um, somewhat excited and I think the main thing is going to be interacting with the people that I have never seen anything like this. I'm looking forward to explaining to them because I get asked a lot of odd questions about how we're doing it and what we're doing. And, on the day, people witnessed something extraordinary at Red Star Raceway. A blind man did four laps on the track, non-stop. I drive behind him, tell him what to do, tell him what's in front of him, whatever's in the way. How exactly do you do that? Right, so what we've got is, um, you know, in the beginning it was a left and a right, and a slight left and a slight right, and, and this, these sentences became too long. 
um, because we wanted quick reaction times. So what we did is we we marked the track from left to right, from one to ten. Five obviously being the middle. So the minute he drifts off to the left, I'll tell him six. If he drifts off too much to the left, I'll tell him seven. And that's the angle of that. That would be what we used down the straights. And in the corners, I'll tell him that we're going coming up to the corner 50 meters, 20 meters. And then he can start his angle. Obviously him knowing or me telling him which left or right turn it is. And he'll start an angle. And I'll tell him to tighten the angle, loosen the angle. And he'll keep it until we're out of the corner. And I'll say we're out of it and we're on the straights again. Back to the four, six. Six and good. Good. Good, good, good. We've got a, a wireless headset so from my helmet to his. Um, so exactly that. It's pretty much like a Bluetooth uh, wireless headset. I go a lot more based on balance and I suppose vibration and those things, but I primarily think we balance because it's the same old thing with a bicycle or a motorbike. You can't just steer at anything over about 17 k's an hour. You know, you don't actually turn the handlebars to the right to go right. You lean right, which means you're actually almost shifting or balancing your weight over. Mm -hmm. And I work a lot more based on that now. Not that I'm going all that fast, but I am hitting uh, 40, 50 k's an hour at times. When he crossed the finish line, he went for another parade lap, and this time leading his motorcycle club. The primary thing is awareness, making people aware of the, what is possible if you set your mind to it. it. It is a lovely feeling, but more so to see the happiness in Jacob. Uh, I, th I think that's the rewarding part for me. You know, maybe on a personal level, yes, it's nice. It's nice to be able to help. But I think the biggest reward is seeing Jacob smile. It's an inspiration. I mean, we can look at ourselves and think we can do anything. You know, if you just put your mind to it. The organizers say he will be submitted for consideration to Guinness World Records, and we hope that this ride will be acknowledged for the remarkable feat that it is. If you apply blindness to yourself as a limit, then that's a choice that you make. The fact is that also I've met a lot of people that I never would have met. I've expanded a lot of my horizons in directions that I never would have even considered. I didn't know, a stupid example would be that even in a Windows XP PC, it had built-in narration, built in the software, in the operating system. So I've expanded my horizons a lot and I've met a lot of people that amaze me that I never would have gotten to know in the past.